Hi everyone. So now I am going to discuss about the UASB reactor. So that is upflow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor. So this is the anaerobic system. Uh, so therefore the anaerobic bacteria is going to decompose the organic matters present in the sewage. It's a kind of a contact process. Okay. So uh, in this particular uh, reactor, so we are going to introduce our uh, sewage from bottom of this USB reactor. So at the bottom of this reactor, we have a, a very thick uh, sludge. So it is a kind of a anaerobic sludge. Uh, so the biomass, that is the anaerobic bacteria, are attached with the uh, the granule of uh, the sludge. So whenever uh, we introduce the sewage in this particular zone, so the anaerobic bacteria decomposes all the organic matters present in the sewage and uh, it will convert as some uh, gases uh, like methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. So these are also some, some of the gases from anaerobic treatment. Okay, so during this uh, treatment, uh, the free gas as well as the gas which is attached with the, uh, the sludge granules are moving towards the top. So at the bottom, which is, uh, it means around 40 to 60 percentage is occupied uh, by the, the sludge bed. The thick sludge bed occupies around 40 to 60 percentage of this reactor volume. So after this zone, so we have the, the sludge blanket zone. So it is a very thin uh, sludge blanket layer. So if there is any uh, organic waste escapes from the uh, sludge bed zone is uh, treated in this zone as well as the flocculent uh, sludge that is uh, the uh, sludge having the biomass. So the sludge that is the solid molecules surrounded by the biomass because of that the gravity of the particular solid is uh, to be increased. So because of the increased gravity the uh, solids are written back that is uh, settled in at the sludge bed zone. Okay. So in this particular uh, zone occupies around 15 to 25 percentage of the volume. So after this uh, zone we have the uh, three phase separator zone. So that is called GLS separator that is gas, liquid and solid separator zone. Okay. So this uh, GLS zone occupies around 20 to 30 percentage of the reactor volume. So I already said uh, the free gas and the gases which is attached with the solid particles are raising at the top of this reactor. So here we have the uh, degassing baffles. Okay. So once the, uh, the gas with solid uh, granules is strikes at the degassing baffles, the gas will be released from the solids. Uh, the gas, uh, that is the released gas as well as the free gas collected at this uh, dome structure. Okay, then the particles that is uh, released from the uh, gases is returned back to the uh, settling. Suppose if there is any solids escapes from this particular uh, degassing baffle. Uh, after that, we have a the settling zone. This is the settling zone. So in this particular zone, uh, so acting as a, a sedimentation tank. So therefore, all the uh, the solids are returned back to this sludge zone. So this is the, uh, the process happening in the USB reactor. So this is the upflow. That is the direction of flow is upward direction. Okay, uh, then uh, the treatment is happening by the, the sludge bed uh, in the at the bottom as well as the sludge blanket over the sludge bed. So next uh, we move to the, the application of uh, USB reactor. So mostly these kind of uh, uh, the reactors is mostly preferred uh, for the uh, 
waste water contains very high suspended solids so even uh, we can use this uh, usb reactor for some of the industries having a very high organic uh, pollutant uh, like uh, beet sugar cane sugar starch breweries dairies tanneries food processing industries and paper and pulp industries so uh, from these kind of industries uh, the cod level is somewhat higher so and also this is one of the proven technology for the domestic sewage also so we can treat uh, using the usb reactor uh, so the cod range from 500 to 10000 mg per liter so if the uh, cod level of the any any effluent or any waste water Uh, which is uh, between the range 1000 to 5000 mg per liter we can achieve very high efficiency of the cod removal around or up to 90 percentage uh, with the hydraulic retention time of 6 to 12 hours so if the cod level below 1000 and above 5000 means we can achieve up to 60 to 80 percentage of the uh, efficiency in terms of uh, organic loading rate so we can achieve the greater value of uh, 20 kg of cod per cubic meter uh, in a day can be applied okay uh, with the uh, the hydraulic retention time of 4 to 24 hours with the organic loading range of 1 to 20 kg of uh, cod per cubic meter day so next we have the, the treatment flow diagram of diagram with the usb reactor so definitely we need a, a screen chamber or a, a bar screen to remove some of the floatable debris then we need a grit chamber uh, chamber to remove the grit particles after that uh, it's a kind of a uh, secondary treatment so we have the usb reactor so after the usb reactor process we may uh, introduce any one of the uh, technologies like uh, uh, sequence sequencing batch reactor or any any waste stabilization pond and we can dispose it to the water bodies so the biogas uh, collected from this uh, dome structure so in the biogas uh, so i already said methane carbon dioxide some other uh, traceable gases like hydrogen sulfide so among these uh, the methane gas is a uh, biogas so we can use it as a biofuel so so we can uh, extract that methane gas uh, and we can use that methane gas as a biofuel from that we can generate a uh, electricity 